What's going on? This is John with EDM Prod, and today we're gonna to be going over a bunch of tips that you can use to get Ableton to run more smoothly. I wanna start off by talking about how you can speed up Ableton's launch. Sometimes Ableton can take a long time to open, and there's a few things you can do to help speed that process up. First and foremost, try to reduce the number of plugins that Ableton has to scan on open. That means choosing only VST, VST3, or audio units if you're on a Mac whenever possible. And also to remove all duplicate plugins that maybe you're not using or any that you know are broken and won't work on your computer. Open up your settings by pressing command comma or control comma if you're on a PC and navigate over to the plugins tab. Under the plugin sources section, this is where you can choose whether you wanna just use audio units or VST2s or VST3s. On mine, I have them all activated. There are certain plugins that I only have as audio units, some I only have as VST2, and some I only have as VST3, so I like to keep all of these on. But if you only use VST3s, then maybe you wanna turn these top ones off. And that's gonna remove a large number of plugins that you're not gonna use anyway. It's also worth noting that under normal conditions, if Ableton has to rescan plugins every time it opens, that means there's a problem with one of those plugins. One thing you can do in addition to going through and getting rid of all the duplicates and broken plugins is to update all of your plugins and that could potentially fix the issue. Something else you can do to speed up Ableton's launch is to use a fast SSD. In most cases, you're gonna be storing your project files or external samples, any of that stuff that maybe doesn't fit on the computer hard drive on an external drive. I always like to use these Samsung T7 Shields. I find them to be very, very quick. I keep all of my samples, my user library, and all of my Ableton projects on this drive. And I've never had any issues with startup time. Something else you can do is make sure you don't have too much over here in the places section. When Ableton launches, it indexes everything that's over here. So the less you have there, the less Ableton has to index. Same thing goes for this current project folder. Ableton will index this whenever you have a specific file to open. And if you've filled this up with a lot of really long recording takes, huge files, then it could take a little extra time. If you're finding there's a lot of junk in this that you don't need on a project you're working on, one thing you can do is go to File, Save Live Set As, save the project in a new location, and then use collect all and save. And what that will do is gather up only the files you're currently using in the project and store them all into a brand new project folder, which is gonna reduce the amount of extra junk that you're just not using. The last tip I have to reduce startup time is to archive all of your old projects, any presets you may have made, and instruments that you aren't using anymore. This is going to reduce CPU to an extent, and now Ableton doesn't have to index all of those files and instruments that you might not use. Now that we've covered how to get Ableton to start up more quickly, let's dive into managing CPU load. I pulled up an old project of mine to demonstrate this. When Ableton is trying to run too many synths or read back from too many audio files, it's possible that you might get CPU dropouts, crackle, glitches, weird sound artifacts, then you're wondering why is this happening? You might also see up here in the top right corner, this little currently blank box will show a red CPU indicator. What that means is you've had a CPU dropout. If you're seeing this regularly or you're getting any of those audible artifacts from CPU dropouts, there's a bunch of stuff you can do to reduce the CPU load. First thing I would suggest is to check which tracks are using the most CPU. If you switch over to session view, and then come down to this little area in the bottom right corner of the screen and click the drop down arrow, you're gonna see performance impact. Go ahead and click that. And now each of these channels has a little meter on the bottom. And this meter shows which channels are using the highest amount of CPU. I'll give this track a play and we're gonna to start to see some of these light up. This project is generally a pretty low CPU intensive one. I use a lot of audio files for it and not a lot of synth processing, but I did notice this channel 58 was giving me a reading on the meter. One thing to note about these CPU meters is that they're only showing CPU usage as it relates to the other tracks. So if this one's using the most, the rest of them will be proportionally scaled and it might not look like they're using all that much CPU. But as I start to do a few things to reduce the CPU load that this one track is using, we might start to see some of the other meters lighting up. The one main thing you can do here is to freeze that track. What freezing a track will do is essentially bounce it in place. It creates an audio file in the background 
And now Live is reading from that audio file as opposed to running all the processing from the synth and effects that's on that channel. I'll right click and choose Freeze Track and give it another play. So now that I have frozen this track and offloaded the CPU processing power, we start to see some of the other meters lighting up a little bit, where previously they were not lighting up. What this is basically now showing is like, okay, we've reduced the CPU on the most CPU intensive track, so now it's kind of recalibrated how it's showing the usage on the other tracks. So now these ones are the highest CPU use. And also take a look up here. Right now my CPU meter is hovering right around 22, 23%. As I start to freeze tracks, we're gonna see this amount go down. This meter is just showing how much CPU Ableton is currently using. So let's freeze these tracks and take a look at this meter after to see if there's much of a difference. All right, these tracks are frozen and take a look at my CPU meter. Now we're hovering right around 17 or 18. So we've reduced the overall just latent CPU usage of Ableton. So now that we've removed these ones from play, there's probably gonna be a few other meters showing up that are now the indicator of the highest CPU usage per track. So the only track here that I saw that is actually showing any indication on the CPU meter is the drum group. I've got a few plugins on this group doing some processing. Problem is with a group, we can't freeze that. So what we can do is actually resample the group. I'm switching back over to session view and I'm gonna make a new audio track under the drum group. Now normally, because it's not actually using a ton of CPU, I, I wouldn't worry about this. For me, for this project, it's not causing a lot of incredible CPU issues. I've got a pretty powerful M1 Mac, and I honestly don't really run into a lot of CPU problems. But if you are, and that issue is with a group, what you can do is resample that group. So on this audio channel that I made, I wanna set the input to the drums group. I'm gonna arm this track to record by clicking the little record arm right here. Set my cursor to where I want the recording to begin and just press record. If I do that for the entire drum stem, now what I can do is delete the whole drum group and use just the drum stem. In this situation, I would probably do a save as and create a new project. That way I don't totally lose all my drums in case I need to go back and make any changes later. I wanna go back over to the settings and talk about a few things we can do in here that'll really help to manage CPU as well. Go to your audio tab. The main two sections we're looking at are the sample rate and latency sections. Your in-out sample rate will have an effect on CPU usage, as well as the default sample rate and pitch conversion. I run mine at 48K, but you could reduce this down to 44.1 and see if that has an effect on your overall CPU load. One of the main things you can do in here though is play around with the buffer size. Now the correlation between buffer size, latency, and CPU is as follows. If you have a higher buffer size, you're gonna have more latency. And what that means is basically the delay between Ableton's playback and when it, you actually hear it coming out of the speakers. Because I don't do a lot of live tracking in my studio, I usually just keep the buffer size as high as it'll go because that gives me a lot of headroom on my CPU. While we're in the audio tab, something else you can do is to turn off any unused input or output channels. If you're using an audio interface that has more than two ins and two outs, what you wanna do is open up the input or output config and turn off all of those channels that are unused. In my studio, I use all of my 18 inputs and outputs. But if you're only using one and two, then you don't need to have any of these on. And you can just go through and turn them all off. Exact same thing goes for the output. Right now I'm just doing some weird audio routing so I don't get my normal number of outputs that I normally get through my Scarlett 18 i 20. But if I was using the Scarlett as my output, I would have a large number. Again, I use all of those. You might not, you can turn them off. When you're dealing with samples, sometimes live can have an issue reading files from whatever hard drive you're using. Now, if you're using an SSD, that's very fast, that shouldn't be a problem. But if for whatever reason it is, and live is lagging or having CPU issues while you are trying to just play back samples, you can actually load them onto the RAM for faster playback. To do that, double click your sample and look down here in the bottom. We have a button that says RAM. If you turn on RAM, 
What that's going to do is load it to your computer's RAM rather than trying to play it back in real time from your hard drive. Be careful when you're doing this though, you don't load too many samples to the RAM because you can run out of memory, in which case you'll get out of memory messages. Something else you can do is turn off high quality rate conversion mode. What having this button on allows you to do is pitch shift a sample without quite as much distortion. I find in most cases, at least for a lot of modern computers, this high quality mode really can just stay on, doesn't have as huge an effect on the overall CPU usage of Ableton as some of the other things we're talking about, but it's good to know that it's there just in case. While we're talking about pitch shifting, time stretching, I might as well mention that the two warp modes, Complex and Complex Pro, tend to use a lot more CPU than the other ones. So if you are using Complex or Complex Pro on a sample, you might want to consolidate that sample by either hitting Command or Control J, or just right clicking and choosing Consolidate. At that point, you can turn warping off because you've already consolidated this into a new clip and you don't really need to have warping turned on at all. I've got a new project open. I've loaded up Serum. There's a few things you can do with plugins that will help to reduce CPU and get Ableton to run more smoothly. So if I've got this synth and I have three oscillators, one of the things that can really increase CPU usage is having the unison mode turned up. I'm just gonna play this and take a look at what the CPU meter reads with unison on one. Looks like we're hitting seven, but if I turn unison up on all of these, we're now hitting 9%. That's because what's actually happening here is Serum is duplicating these oscillators and creating 16 different detuned versions of this oscillator behind the scenes. So it's a lot more oscillators running a lot more processing power. If you don't need unison detuned, you can turn this down. Although sometimes it's completely integral to the sound design. So maybe you don't have that option, in which case I would just resample the sound or freeze the track. You can also turn off any unused filters as well, or get rid of any effects or turn off any effects that you don't want over here in this effects section. A few particular live stock plugins are relatively CPU heavy. One of those is Wavetable, also Echo, and reverb. Again, the best way around this is to freeze and flatten or to just freeze the track. To wrap this up, there's also a few non-Ableton related things you can do to get it to run smoother. One thing you can do is to close plugin windows. If you have a whole stack of them on maybe your second screen that you don't really need to be looking at at that time, you can just close them down and that's gonna help the CPU load of the computer entirely because it doesn't have to run the user interface on those synths at that time. You can also reduce CPU throttling by lowering the temperature of your environment or getting a cooling pad for your laptop. You also wanna make sure that the vents and the fans on your computer are nice and clean and not covered in dust. If they're dusty and all gunked up, then that can reduce the efficiency of the fans and it might end up not doing as good of a job at cooling your computer. There you go, just a few tips and tricks to help you get Ableton running nice and fast and smooth. Hope these were helpful. If you've got any other tips, throw them down in the comments. We'd love to hear about what you're doing to make Ableton as efficient as possible.